The U.S. Naval Research Bureau is the to rocket camera photograph of a luminous, deceptively globular and isolated appearing area of the Earth's outer sky from an altitude of 100 miles over white sands. A white cloud-like formation appears in the luminous sky area. It will be recalled that the formation resulting from like variation within the luminous sky area photographed was misinterpreted as a cloud in the stratosphere. Seafront Isthmus. You consider white, the same white nation would be conjectured to be in a distance of 20,000 or 100,000 miles. There could be no question about the astronomical label. It like many corresponding celestial sky, a gas formation would have to be known as up nebula. The drift in the enveloping stratosphere sea of darkness that description would apply, despite the fact that the white portion is in reality an intricate part of the luminous sky areas. Black patches detected in the so-called Milky Way section of the celestial sky are intriguing partners of the white patches. They would also be detected in the dense center of our terrestrial sky, where skylight intensity presented to telescopic observation, a richness of star field that terrestrial sky center would depend on the observational position held in the stratosphere or on a celestial land area. Were we to change our present terrestrial location, to that celestial location now considered the Milky Way. It would be found that the terrestrial sky over the land position we left holds the greatest concentration of skylight points and that the Royal Sky section would merit the designation Milky Way in comparison with other terrestrial sky areas. It would possess requisite seeming profusion of light points, hence across the luminous stretch of our entire terrestrial. Skylar would be found from distant observation at least one skylight area corresponding to the celestial Milky Way, as our angle of observation away from the overhead terrestrial Milky Way was accentuated, it would be found that there was a seeming diminishing of skylight concentration, or as astronomically defined a modification of the richness of the star field. Though the astronomically defined richness of the star field would be constant in skylight continuity. Though not necessarily in brilliancy, throughout the entire terrestrial sky, there would appear to be a diminution of skylight concentration away from the Milky Way section. To illustrate, we will assume that Des Moines, Iowa, and a certain adjacent sky area, is a terrestrial Milky Way. As observation is sent from a celestial land position over dim wanes, the Des Moines sky area, and a considerable sky area extending away from Des Moines would present to telescopic observation the terrestrial sky area of seemingly most abundant light accumulation. That accumulation would mean more points of light, but not brighter points. Every observation beyond that established and more pronounced Milky Way skylight accumulation would necessitate telescopic observation and photography at an increasing angle to facilitate search for stars on the distant horizons of the terrestrial heavens above the detection of remote terrestrial stars. Or skylight points would find them more sharply defined as isolated entities in the skylight accumulation, comprising the so-called terrestrial Milky Way. The brilliancy permitting of detection of whatever intensity or astronomical magnitude would accentuate the apparent isolation common to the skylight of the entire universe. But the apparent isolation would not be as pronounced in the Milky Way. The greater the volume of mass light, despite the lesser brilliancy of every point thereof, the less pronounced is the apparent isolation of each point of the entire area. However, the massed light point hull constituting the Milky Way must appear to be more detached from other detected skylight points of the entire sky. That is why the so-called Milky Way seems to be unique, yet it represents skylight the same as any other detected lonely star. Though we would know from the celestial observation point that there existed a continuity of land and sky at the designated terrestrial Milky Way. Considerable of the sky light area would not be detected as observation at an angle was made away from the Des Moines sky center of the terrestrial Milky Way. Any love center observation imposes limitations, though every terrestrial sky area is in fact to some degree luminous. As every area of the celestial sky as many areas would have to be assumed non-existent from celestial observation, because the skylight of such areas would not be detected, for various reasons previously described, the astronomical procedure of searching for stars on the distant horizons beyond the Milky Way concentration of celestial skylight may be considered sea-related to the more realistic procedure of a laboratory technician 
surged that realistic search would constitute examination of a mass specimen on the illuminated surface of a clinical glass slide. The multiple minute particles of the specimen mass would be the technician's field, as the entire celestial sky is the astronomer's field. The electric light illumination of the glass slide would represent the astronomer's skylight. The technician's microscope would represent the astronomer's telescope in direct and near direct focus of the microscope lens. The greatest accumulation of specimen would be apparent, even though the field was of the same density throughout. If the field were enlarged by light's focus, they would have to appear to be a diminishing of the central concentration of specimen. Then the original margins of the central concentration would have to appear to become thinner to a point of specimen obliteration. The development of that condition would not mean that there was actually less specimen substance of the extremities of the glass slide field, but it would limit observation of the field, equal in density. The area of direct or near direct lens focus would seem to hold the most specimen substance. It becomes evident that the laboratory technician working in these walls of time holds a considerable advantage over the astronomer working in the limitless counters of infinity, the technician working in the limitless corners of infinity, the technician working in a limited but realistic world can constantly move and adjust the glass slide or star field equivalent to serve his purpose and he can keep constant or he can increase or diminish the illumination of his field further and having complete control of the field and its light, he can, it will adjust the microscope lens for constant dead center observation of the specimen there seems to be lacking any record of an astronomer who was capable of making adjustments to his star field specimen, which would keep it in direct focus, immobile and under the constant and proper illumination required for observation and determination. The skylight of the celestial as well as the terrestrial is not subject to the penetrative enterprise of telescope lenses or to the whim and deduction of astronomers. On the contrary, skylight everywhere influences lens ability to adapt as well as the astronomer's deduction. It is a fascinating game of tag, where the astronomers and their lenses continue to be. It the humble but much more practical laboratory technician holds an additional advantage in the Earth. She deals with known entities in a world of reality. If the least doubt is harbored concerning the identity of certain matter or entities within the specimen of the slight field, any number of practical tests made directly upon the doubtful substance will determine its exact properties, that little feature of direct contact with an immediate test of the questionable. Hannity differs considerably from the extremely abstract mathematical test to which the astronomer is restricted in an effort to determine conditions and entities of this remote abstract star fields. It will be shown that astronomy refutes astronomical conclusions in the making as a result of the manner of observation leading to the conclusions, where an astronomer detects dual movement, or what appears to be dual in observation of the remote luminous celestial sky area, and spectroscopic analysis confirms apparent duality of motion. He is compelled by concept to conclude that two distinct entities are operating at the single white point under analysis the astronomer could. But he does not conclude that a single energy at work at the particular celestial skylight point is prescribing a double motion. In consideration of the astronomer's conclusion, it is here pertinent to recall previous reference to the undulation motion of sky gas and that the astronomer even makes use of the word undulating. And it may be well to remind that undulation is a double motion. The astronomer is forced to conclude that the motion is attributable to entities contained in the astronomer's mind and the entities of illusion. The mind contains or isolated bodies, globular or spheroidal moving in a circle or an ellipse. Nothing else will do in reality there exists for telescope lens and the astronomer's instruments to determine nothing more than the dual motion of gas in a luminous sky area, which covers it obscures the stationary land under that detected sky area. The act of sky gas moves, but the underlying land never participates in the movement. It seems singular that the astronomer determines in favor of the preconceived circling. Our ellipse embodies in view of the fact that he applies the very meaningful terms moving back and forth, undulating and fluctuating, which deny the preconceived entities and their motion. Yet, as illusion-fostered conclusions must be that the lens of the spectrum or either in recording such movements 
truly establishes the existence of two distinct celestial bodies in motion. To emphasize this most important feature, it should be noted that his conclusion of celestial bodies does not imply bodies of gas. In keeping with the dictates of reality and reason, tend the illusion persist that the motion of sky gaseous signifies the motion of motionless landmass, which cannot be detected under the luminous moving sky. Gas observed that nothing has detected or established even one less body in motion, to say nothing of two bodies. There has simply been achieved confirmation of double motion within a certain luminous celestial sky area. Hence the astronomer's terms undulating and fluctuating are appropriately applied for description of the recorded movements of gaseous elements within the luminous sky area. But the terms have no further application upon that single instance of erroneous conclusion is erected an astronomical framework of abundant miscalculations having checked the mechanical findings of double motion with that thought by direct vision. There is nothing left for the astronomer's conclusion and that which his concept hold isolated. Rounded bodies circling or ellipse in space, the telescopic in Florida, the cleanses have not detected and recorded them. The astronomer has not observed them. They, the bodies, are not established by spectrum and spectroscopic analysis. However, they are concluded to exist as isolated globular mass entities when they constitute nothing more than lens created disk areas of skylight gas in motion. We may do placate the astronomer's application and his findings of the celestial by returning to the lofty stratosphere observation point, permitting view of terrestrial sky areas as we adjust the telescope for observation of Portland in Bangor, Maine, on the east coast of the United States or any other section of the nation, the luminous sky areas to be detected over any land community will appear precisely as the luminous celestial areas of astronomical observation appear. Our lenses will detect nothing but a luminous disk-like sky area at every angle of observation. And as far as our lens can penetrate, we will observe the same condition. It would be ridiculous even to hope to see through the luminous terrestrial sky areas to observe the land and water in the community. Life we know is underlying the sky areas. We may first detect the skylight over Bangor, Maine. It will be found that Bangor's skylight seems to fluctuate. It will be prescribing the dual motion which could very readily be misinterpreted as circling or ellipse in from proper distance. Were we to achieve that distance, they would develop the illusion of circling and though we might even accept the usury movements as having application to the luminous sky area, our knowledge of the underlying land would dispel the illusion in relation to the land area. We would not fleetingly harbor the illusion that Bangor had become isolated from the remainder of Maine and was executing on our build worlds in stratosphere space, making telescope adjustment to embrace terrestrial sky areas north of Bangor. We may detect a luminous terrestrial sky area that appears to roam and it will be much brighter than the star of Bangor, we will perhaps find on consulting our terrestrial star chart that the bright rolling area represents the sky over Montreal, Canada. As we continue our telescopic search, there will be detected a luminous sky area west of Montreal, which arouses interest. There will be a pronounced white film on the lower left corner of the sky area. Its appearance will promote doubt that it is part of the sky area and we shall conclude that since it is not a voluminous sky area, it is a nebula in the stratosphere, then adjusting our telescope for observation of the New Hampshire sky. We shall detect a dark area, then the luminous sky which Outstar Chart designates as Portsmouth, New Hampshire, magnifying the luminous sky area where the stronger lens will disclose the original dark spot as three distinct formations. They will be easily considered humps on the luminous sky area. In fact, they will so closely resemble the astronomical camel hump cluster in celestial skylight that we will be impelled to name him that once of Portsmouth. Hence it will be perceived that the conditions recorded of luminous celestial sky areas or light shading is at one time determined as a nebula detached from the luminous sky area and on other occasions as the grotesque formation of the luminous area must be included in record of terrestrial sky areas. As it has been related, Corresponding conditions have to date been found in the luminous terrestrial sky over White Sands, New Mexico, an adjacent territory as the sins of this Earth's desert regions are related as particles of sun and as the waters of the Earth are related as water. 
In like manner does the luminosity of every terrestrial sky area correspond to elements and conditions of celestial sky areas. Terrestrial skata gas describes the identical motions of celestial sky gas. And the observed conditions of terrestrial sky areas will impose the same illusions as those burdening astronomers, empty quest of the celestial universe about it. The identical stellar spectra will develop from analysis of light waves from terrestrial sky areas.